First up on our list is the Desert Scorpion. Now you're gonna find these little guys everywhere in the Nevada desert. Scorpion venom is used in moderation and it takes the scorpion a lot of energy to produce. When they use their venom, it's usually used for subduing prey, in self-defense, and in some species for mating. The venom is comprised of molecules called neurotoxin. And when this neurotoxin is injected, it attacks the nerve cells of the victim, causing paralysis or sometimes death. There's about 25 species of scorpions in Nevada, but the Arizona bark scorpion is the most venomous scorpion in North America and is a common pest right here in the Las Vegas Valley. If you get stung by a scorpion and you're very concerned about it, you should definitely call the Nevada Poison Control Center hotline at 1-800-222-1222. Next up is the tarantula. These are some of my favorite invertebrates that live here in Nevada. Now while they are bigger and hairier and sometimes more intimidating than all the other local spiders, they're actually among the least aggressive and their bite is not very dangerous to most humans. There are about 800 tarantula species worldwide and about 50 of those live in the American Southwest. They also have specialized hairs on their abdomens that they can flick at their enemies. If you're on the receiving end of one of these hairs, you can expect irritation that's kind of similar to brushing against a stinging nettle plant. If you get the hairs in your eyes or inhale them, however, it can be more serious. A tarantula bite kind of feels like a bee sting, and that's usually the end of it, but some people could have a more serious allergic reaction. The mosquito. There are now over 3,500 mosquito species worldwide and approximately 175 of them in the, are in the United States. You may not expect these little guys to be on the list of scary creepy crawlies, but they're widely considered to be the deadliest animal in the world because they transmit so much disease. These can include malaria, West Nile disease, yellow fever, and Rift Valley fever, just to name a few. What you might not know about mosquitoes is that only the female mosquitoes bite people. Both male and female feed mainly on fruit and plant nectar, but the female also needs the protein in blood to help her eggs develop. Once she's had her fill of blood, she'll rest a couple days before laying her eggs. The Black Widow. Many of you have probably seen this spider before, or at least heard of it. They're pretty common spiders around this area, and they're mostly known for their red hourglass shape. However, male black widows frequently have yellow and red bands and spots over their backs. But a lot of younger black widows also have that of both sexes. This is important because only the female black widow is dangerous to humans. The venom of the female black widow spider is 15 times as toxic as the venom of a prairie rattlesnake. But the good news is, the female black widow spider, though it is the most venomous spider in North America, seldom causes death as it injects a very small amount of poison when it bites. The brown recluse. Now the brown recluse is referred to sometimes as the violin spider because it has a dark brown violin shaped marking on the cephalothorax, which is the portion of the body where the legs attach. They are more venomous than many venomous snakes. And although their bites are not necessarily lethal, they can still leave a very nasty wound if the victim is sensitive to their cytotoxin. In severe reactions, the bite site can develop what's called a volcano lesion. And what that basically means is the damaged tissue dies and leaves an open wound that can be as large as a human hand. But the good news is, this spider is not known for having an aggressive nature. It's more likely to run away from you out of fear than defend its territory and will only bite when provoked. There's been a lot of talk about Asian giant hornets having come to the United States recently, or as you might have heard them called, murder hornets. But did you know we have a little guy that might be even more creepy right here in the valley? The tarantula hawk moth. Only the females will battle spiders to provide food for their offspring. They use their sharp, curved stinger to paralyze their spider victim, making sure to keep it alive for later use. Then, the incapacitated spider is dragged into its burrow or to the wasp's nest, where she lays a single egg on its body. When the egg hatches, a hawk moth's larva burrows its way inside the spider's abdomen and begins feasting on the still-living tarantula. 
Tarantula hawk moths have one of the most painful stings in the world, only beaten by the bite of a South American bullet ant. Though it only affects the victim for about five minutes, it's been described as being struck by a lightning bolt, immediate and excruciating. The good news is that these wasps are so confident, considering they have so few predators, that they aren't particularly aggressive or afraid of humans. In fact, they really don't care much about humans at all. They're more focused on going after their favorite meal, tarantulas. So for our craft, we're going to be making a little rosette spider. It's pretty cute. And there's a couple different um, things you'll need in order to make this little guy. One of which is a piece of fabric. Now you can use any type of fabric for this craft. You can cut it into a strip just like this. You're also going to need some googly eyes. And you can always draw those on and glue them that way if you don't have googly eyes at home. I used a pipe cleaner and I cut it into eight little legs because spiders have eight legs. And I just used a piece of paper to cut little fangs. So as you can see, just cut out some little fangs with paper and scissors. You also need a piece of felt. So just like that. And the last thing you're going to need is a hot glue gun. All right, to start with our craft, we're gonna take our strip of fabric and we are going to be tying a knot towards the very end. Just like that. We're going to tuck that little piece under like this and we're going to be gluing our first part onto our felt circle. And just be very, very careful with that hot glue gun because it is very hot. So, once we have that glued together, we're just going to wait a little bit so that it, it cools off. And we're going to take this end part and start to twist around. And now that we have that little piece of fabric, we're going to twist it and just secure it in the back. So that way, it's all hidden from our rows. And there is the main body of our little spider friend. So for my little guy, I ended up um, pinning a safety pin on the back, but you can also do a hair tie if you want to put them in your hair or just put them like on your shirt or your backpack. Now that we have our little body, we are going to be putting on our googly eyes. So as you can see, I was gluing them in pairs. So that, let's do that. All right, next we're gonna be putting on our fangs, so. Next we are going to be putting on our legs, and you're going to be putting four on each side. make your own little rosette spider at home. And remember, you can use any sort of fabric you want. You can make your spider any color. You can make their fangs any color as well. 
their little eyes, you can draw, just get creative with it because spiders come in many shapes and colors and sizes. And so maybe you could go online and kind of look at some pictures of spiders and see which one you like and maybe model it after that. Maybe you want to make a black widow like in our video and put a little red hourglass shape on the back. So you can get very, very creative with it. Hey everyone, so don't forget about our summer challenge that the library is holding this summer. You can visit one of our local branches or go to lvccld.org slash summer challenge to sign up. And it's a really fun format that we have going on this summer. It looks almost like a game board where it has you reading for 30 minutes at a time and then there's activity points that you can do. Well. Guess what? If you make one of these little spiders like we just did in this craft tutorial, that counts as one of our activity points. So you can definitely mark that off when you make your little spider. Alright, so can't wait to see you this summer. 